Life is a game. Today I'll be sharing how you can find your reason for playing this infinite game of life. Hello everyone, welcome to the Nasty Dynasty where we all learn about life-changing habits, skill sets and mindsets to help us all become more nasty. Today, I'll be discussing a topic so deep that even Adele can roll in it. Which explains why I'm wearing this cap over here because I recently just cut my hair and I kind of look like shit now. So I don't think y'all can take me seriously if I were to talk with this hair. So, yep, let's just carry on. Let's start off with this <coughs> statement. Everything around us is just a game, but with different rules, different players, and different difficulties. This entire concept of life being a game is so abstract and many YouTubers have already come up with many videos with different insights talking about this concept. In the book, The Infinite Game by Simon Sinek, he actually mentioned five essential principles that can help us to play the infinite game. But in his book, he mostly focused on the infinite game of business. So for today's video, I actually tweaked the entire book's information about the infinite game of business to try and help us to understand a bit more about the infinite game of life. If I were to talk about every single principle, I think this video will be about 1 hour to 2 hours long. So basically, for today's video, I will just be talking about the most important principle, which is to find your purpose in life. As you all know, I'm just a normal guy, and I don't even have any big achievements yet. So I'm definitely not the best person to make this video. I mean, look look at, look at my hair. But then again, I will guess that in the Nasty Dynasty, most of us here are all normal people. So maybe this video will be more applicable to you, and me. Before I begin, I know I mentioned the word infinite a lot. So let us first understand what's the difference between finite games and infinite games. Finite games are basically games that have an end, with a winner, a loser, or even a draw. For example, your basketball match and your Dota 2 game, they are all finite games. Infinite games, on the other hand, do not have an end, and they do not have winners or losers. An example of this is basically life. There is no such thing as winning the game of life. When we take part in an infinite game, our objective should not be to defeat others or to be the best of the best. Instead, our objective should be to last as long as we can in the game. We don't get to choose whether a particular game is infinite or finite, but we do get to choose whether or not we want to take part in the game. And should we choose to take part in the game, we can choose to play the game either with a finite mindset or an infinite mindset. I understand that all this information is very confusing and a lot to take in. Let me explain a bit more about infinite games as well as how having a purpose can help us to play the infinite game with the use of an example that we can all relate to, education. I believe we can all agree that education easily fits the characteristics of an infinite game in a sense that we can't exactly win in the game of education and there is technically no end to education because we will never stop learning. Some of you might be thinking that education is actually a finite game because of all the tests and all the exams. Well, actually, that's what most people think. So let me see if I can change your mind. In an infinite game, there can be finite goals that serve as stepping stones to help us to get closer to achieving our purpose. So basically, in the infinite game of education, these finite goals are our tests and our exams. In a sense, we can technically win and lose in tests so you are right to say that these tests are actually finite games. So education isn't really all about tests and exams. Education can also be used to help us improve our social skills as well as help us develop more emotional maturity. But for this case, let's just say that education just incorporates our usual math, sciences and what we are going to study in university. Hmm. So let's first see how it's like if we play this infinite game of education with a finite mindset which is what most of us are actually doing right now. In our education systems today, our teachers and even our parents have been shaping our mindsets ever since we were young to play this infinite game of education with a finite mindset. All our lives, we have been told to study hard to get good results so that we can have good jobs in the future and that's all there is to it. We are always compared to our friends and our classmates and even our cousins to see who is the smartest person out there. Very few of our teachers and our parents have actually explained to us why we go to school in the first place. So going to school can actually help us to learn problem solving skills that can be applied in the working world as well as understanding our own unique way of learning and absorbing information while also helping us to improve our social skills by interacting with our classmates as well as our CCA mates. I wish that back when I was younger, somebody could explain to me why I went to school, like how I just explained it just now. So naturally, I will assume that majority of the students 
are just studying just for the sake of it, similar to how I did in the past. Back in the days, I found it so difficult to have the discipline to just sit down on my chair and study on a consistent basis. When we are studying just to do well, tests after tests, I would say that the only thing that is driving us is the potential fulfillment that we get if we were to get good results. So if you want to over exaggerate it, you can say that education became something like a drug. Like we are just studying to get that spike in dopamine levels and the process just keeps repeating and repeating. And it is actually that shallow. So now let's see how it's like if we play the infinite game of education with an infinite mindset. So let's say that we are playing the infinite game of education with the purpose of being professionals in our area of expertise when we enter the working world. So in other words, my purpose to pursue education is to acquire knowledge so that I can contribute and add value to my company in the future. With this purpose in mind, we can look at tests and exams as finite goals that pushes us to our limits to increase our knowledge to our maximum potential. We can also look at it as doing well in our exams and our tests so that we will be granted opportunities to go for overseas exchange programs as well as take up internships at prestigious companies. These opportunities actually serve as stepping stones for us to advance towards our purpose because by going for all these opportunities, we actually gain valuable experience that can be used to help our companies in the future. As you can see, when we have a purpose, every single thing that we do seems to have a reason behind it. By having a reason in certain things that we do, we will be able to find intrinsic motivation to help push us through tough and stressful times because there is a point in doing what you're doing. Back in secondary school and JC, I actually had zero motivation and drive to study because I literally had no sense of purpose that can provide me with a reason to study in the first place. I was literally watching anime and playing games like Dota 2 every single day. Actually, I'm still quite proud that I finished 600 episodes of One Piece during my one month of June holidays during secondary 2. Like, I think I should be given like a Guinness World Record or some shit but, but that's besides the point. So actually, by finding out my life's purpose, I actually find meaning and value in a lot of things that I do today which include going to school as well as even reading books. Like you know, once you have that form of intrinsic motivation, it just keeps you going regardless of whatever you are doing. I just want you guys to know that there is a difference between having an infinite mindset and having a finite mindset when it comes to playing infinite games and that finding your sense of purpose is one of the most important steps when it comes to incorporating an infinite mindset in the infinite game. Wow, that was a mouthful but Anyways, so for the question of the day, how do you actually go about finding a reason for your existence? This is a very difficult question and it's a damn difficult process, but let's just first understand what makes up a purpose. In my own words, I would say that a purpose is basically a contribution that you can make to people, communities, countries, and even the world. Different people have different levels of purpose, so we can all just start by thinking about how we can add value into the lives of the people around us. You don't need a 75 character phrase for your purpose to be good. There's no such thing as a winning purpose in the infinite game of life. As long as you are contributing to a community or adding value to anybody's lives, that's already a purpose. For me, my purpose for now is to actually share and educate people, especially students in secondary and tertiary education, about life-changing skill sets, habits, and mindsets that can possibly change their lives for the better. During the past 3 months, I actually grew from someone with no sense of purpose to someone that is sharing on how to find your purpose. So don't say I'm not brother, let me just give 3 general tips and tricks on how you can start finding your purpose in life. <sighs> wow, damn hot. So tip number 1 will be to leave the house more, to explore the world and meet more people. There are so many things out there in the world that we haven't seen. The more we see and experience, the higher the probability that there will be this spark within us that makes us want to make a change to the world. You can always start by making some small changes. Like for example, instead of studying at home, you can always study at Starbucks or a nearby library. When you meet up with your friends to catch up, you can also choose to go to a different place like for example Jurong instead of Amokyo. We can also start meeting more people because when we meet and converse with people from different backgrounds, we will be able to learn more about their dreams and their aspirations. We can actually gain more exposure to other people's purpose in life which may serve as forms of inspiration for us to slowly shape our own purpose. A simple way to start is by joining orientation programs, joining a new CCA or even taking part in community involvement programs so that we meet all kinds of people from different backgrounds. Tip number 2 will be to read books. I will personally recommend reading non-fiction books about anything at all as long as it piques your interest. You can read about travelling, knitting, cooking, science, 
and you will still learn something from it. Heck, I would even recommend reading biographies if you are into those kind of stuff. If you want to look at it this way, books are actually a cheat code to learning more about life and learning about the world. This is because every single book is a condensed form of the author's years of experience and knowledge. By being exposed to different insights from different authors, we will be able to slowly shape our purpose in life to fit our interests. I will recommend starting off with borrowing and reading one book a month, which is actually quite easy. Like let's say if you're reading a 300 page book, you probably need to read only 10 books a day. 10 books a day? Which will probably take you 20 minutes max. For tip number three, it will be to take your first step. Basically, to just start now. The most effective way is to have a rough idea of your purpose, then take small steps to solidifying your purpose and altering it accordingly. For me, I knew that I enjoyed sharing information and learning about many different things, but I wasn't very sure about what kind of information I would want to share and how I can impact other people's lives. After doing the first two steps, I actually had a very rough idea of where my purpose lies. Then I decided to just try educating people about habits, skill sets, and mindset changes so that I can see where my purpose really lies. But like, even right now, if I want to find some flaws in my purpose, I can probably find like a shit ton. But come on, even if you spend years trying to figure out a perfect purpose, it will never be perfect. As you gain more experience and more knowledge, you can then slowly adjust your purpose accordingly. Always remember that the first step is the hardest step, yet the most important step. For me, starting this YouTube channel was like a first step. Like, who am I to share knowledge? I'm not a millionaire, I'm not Elon Musk, and my hair is like so so freaking ugly. But from my personal experience, as you slowly step out of the comfort zone, you will gain inspiration and learn so much more than if you were to just remain in your bubble of comfort, waiting for something to happen. I actually chanced upon a very good example recently. There was this YouTuber that mentioned the concept of self-improvement being very stupid and stuff because people just learn and they don't apply in real life. He used the analogy of a knight sharpening his sword inside the castle while there is a war happening outside of the castle. He mentions that even if he has the perfect sword and he goes out to go and fight the war, he will probably kinda hantam because he doesn't have any better experience. Basically what he is trying to say is that we have to go out and gain some personal experience because we can never ever learn from just readings and reflections alone. So basically for tip number 3, you don't really need to go and find like a very very good purpose before you go and start experiencing things in real life. You can always start by taking up more activities that you are passionate about and even starting up some initiatives. And if you are not passionate about something, you can always go and explore different kinds of activities to go and find where your passion really lies. So once again, these are the 3 general tips and tricks to help you to find your purpose in life. As you all can see, these tips are very very general, so anybody can go about doing it. If you guys are interested to find out more about this concept about finding a purpose in your life, I've attached some video links in the description below that actually help me to find my purpose in life. So basically, to sum the entire video up, we have to remember to approach the infinite game of life with an infinite mindset. Life isn't all about KDA ratios and win rates. There is so much more to life. Finding a purpose in life is the first and the most important principle in the infinite game of life. Mainly because we will be more disciplined and motivated in everything that we do because we are working hard for a much larger cause. With a purpose, we will also constantly seek to learn more, to further improve ourselves, to last in this infinite game of life. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope that you have learned a thing or two about this infinite game of life and how we can change our mindsets towards life in general. I would definitely recommend giving the book The Infinite Game by Simon Sinek a read especially for those who are keen to start your own business as it covers how to establish the fundamentals towards a strong business model. With that, I will see all of you next Monday. Always remember, stay nasty.